Hi, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can install Oxide plugins onto your Rust server. So, let's just get right into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the link in the description. And this will take you to Umod, where you can find tons of different plugins for Rust. So I've found three different plugins that I'd like to install on my server. So once you've found yours, go over to the download button. However, we're not actually going to click that. We're going to click the clipboard next to it, which will copy the URL. Once you've copied it, go to Pebblehost. And then on the left, we're going to go to the Umod plugin manager. Then where it says plugin link, we're simply going to paste it in and then click install plugin. And there we go, we've now installed the admin panel. So now of course, do it with the other plugins as well. So once you've installed them all, we're simply now just going to restart our server. And while the server is starting up, you can also see the plugins being installed in the console. So as you can see, I'm now in game. And I've already been testing these plugins a little bit. So as you can see, I've got a few weapons here. And with the weapons name plugin that I downloaded, if we go to our inventory, you can see I've renamed this sword. Now it's pretty simple. You take your weapon, you then press F1 to go to the console, and then you can run all your commands in here. So for the specific plugin, I need to do CT and then the name of the weapon. So let's say I wanted to call it the basic handgun. As you can see, we do get some errors sometimes, like we just had where it said max character limit was 12. Things like this actually can be changed in the config. So if we just call it a handgun, we can now check, and as you can see, it's a handgun. And if we were to change it again to basic gun, as you can see, we must wait 45 seconds before using this command again. Now again, that's another thing you can change in the config. And most plugins that you install will have a config file. So to go to your config files, you're going to go to the left to the file manager. Once you're in here, you're then going to find the Oxide folder and then go into config. In here, you'll then have a JSON file for each of your plugins. So let's say I wanted to go to the weapon names one. As you can see, we can change the digit limit as well as also the cooldown between commands. So let's say I want to change the digits to 20 and the commands in minutes to, for example, half a minute, it would be 0.5 as it's asking for it in minutes. Then you simply click save and then restart your server. So another one of the plugins we downloaded was admin panel. So I'm just going to test this one as well. So I need to do admin panel and then toggle. And then as you can see on the right, we have a teleport button. And this plugin allows you to set up different teleports so you can quickly teleport to any part of the map that you'd like. However, if these plugin commands aren't working for you, it may be because you don't have permission. So we need to make sure you have the right permissions. Now we do have a whole video on showing how to add moderators and admins to your server, and I'll leave that as an iCard in the top right corner right now. But one thing Oxide allows you to do is actually grant permissions for certain commands. So for example, for the command I just did, I actually had to add a permission. Now these permissions will all be listed on the plugins pages, but you want to go to the console with F1 and then type in Oxide dot grant and then a space and then user and then you can put the user's name or steam 64 id i'm going to put my 64 id and then the name of the permission so for me this was admin panel dot allowed and as you can see it has granted me permission to use it to remove the permission is just as simple once again go to console and then you're going to type the same command you did before but instead of putting grant after oxide you're instead going to put revoke and you do this and it will remove the permission. So if you are an admin or a moderator, you shouldn't actually need these permissions to be set up for you, as you should automatically have permission to do everything. So as you can see, my permission is revoked, but we're still gonna do the command. CT, and then we'll name it to AK. And as you can see, the weapon tag has still been changed to AK, even though I don't have the permission, but I am an owner. So that is why I can still do it. Anyway, hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, definitely leave a like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.